In this video, I'm going to cover demand. What is demand? Demand is the different quantities of goods that consumers are willing and able to buy at different prices. You're able to purchase donuts, but if you aren't willing to buy, then there is no demand. What is the law of demand? There is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. So, think about a possible example of demand. What if I'm willing to sell several A's in AP Economics? How much would you be willing to pay? The lower the price, the higher the quantity demanded is probably going to be in our class. There are three separate behavior patterns that overlap. The substitution effect, the income effect, the law of diminishing marginal utility, and we'll define and explain each. Why does the law of demand occur? The substitution effect, so Coke versus Pepsi. If the price goes up for a product, consumers buy less of that product and more of another substitute product and vice versa. So would you substitute Coke for Pepsi or vice versa? The income effect. If the price goes down for a product, the purchasing power increases for consumers, allowing them to purchase more. The law of diminishing marginal utility. Again, as a reminder from Unit 1, utility means satisfaction. We buy goods because we get utility from them. The law of diminishing marginal utility states that as you consume anything, the additional satisfaction that you will receive will eventually start to decrease. In other words, the more you buy of any good, the less satisfaction you get from each of the un new units consumed. What does this have to do with the law of demand? How does this affect the pricing of business? Hopefully we'll answer those questions for you. Let's look at how we graph demand. The demand curve. A demand curve is a graphical representation of a demand schedule. The demand curve is downward sloping, showing the inverse relationship between price, which is on the y-axis, and quantity demanded, which is on the x-axis. When you read a demand curve, you're going to assume all outside factors such as income are held constant, and we call this ceteris paribus. Let's draw a new demand curve for milk. So draw this graph and each price and quantity as a point. So you should get a demand curve that looks like this. Where do we get the market demand? Let's assume we have a demand schedule for Billy, a demand schedule for Jean, and a demand schedule for other individuals. The sum of these demand curves equals the market demand. So those are illustrated below in this graph. Shifts in demand if we hold all other things constant. When the ceteris paribus assumption is dropped, movement no longer occurs along the demand curve. Rather, the entire demand curve is going to shift. And a shift means that at the same prices, more people are willing and able to purchase that good. There is a change in demand, not a change in quantity demanded. So if the only thing that's changing is the price, the demand curve is not going to shift. Okay, think about this. What if milk makes you smarter? If that were to happen, then the demand curve is going to shift. There'd be what we call an increase in demand. The prices didn't change, but people want more milk at the same price. What if milk calls, causes baldness? We would have the reverse. There would be a decrease in demand. 
prices didn't change, but people want less milk at each price. There are two possible ways to increase quantity from 10 to 20. Number one, to get to A to B, there is a change in quantity demanded due to a change in the price. So the price went from $3 to two dollars there's not a shift in the demand curve but the quantity demanded has gone up because the price has gone down the other way is to get from a to c something caused the entire demand curve to shift so we have an increase in um, more quantity being consumed it went from 10 to 20 but the entire curve has shifted so think about this question. What happens to the demand for milk if the price of milk goes up? Nothing. The demand is going to stay the same. What would change would be the quantity demanded. There are five things that can shift demand. Tastes and preferences, the number of consumers or the market changes, price of related goods, income or future expectations a change in price does not shift the curve they only cause movement along the curve again referred to as quantity demanded what about prices of related goods the demand curve excuse me the demand curve for one good can be affected by a change in the price of another good Substitutes are goods that are used in place of one another. So if the price of Pepsi falls, the demand for Coke is probably going to go down. If the price of one good increases, the demand for the other will increase or vice versa. Complements are two goods that are bought and used together. So if the price of hot dog falls, the demand for hot dog buns is going to go up. If the price of one increases, the demand for the other is going to fall or vice versa. The incomes of consumers change the demand, but how depends on the type of good. A normal good is something that you are, want to consume more of with the more money you have. So luxury cars, seafood, jewelry, homes. As your income goes up, the demand increases. As your income falls, the demand falls. Inferior goods, an example, would be uh, ramen noodles, used cars, used clothes. As your income goes up, the demand for an inferior good is going to fall. As your income falls, the demand is going to increase. Read this practice question and see if you can determine the answer. The answer would be B. Here's another practice question. And the answer would be D. Here's some more practice. You can pause the video, determine the shifter, and decide will, whether demand will increase or decrease. The good is hamburgers, a normal good. And here are the answers. <music>